first isolated queen pawn position after move like e2, e4. It's like a, a Karo Khan uh, with an extra tempo, if you will, for the white side. Now, that doesn't mean that you get an advantage, it just means, well, uh, imbalanced position. Um, bishop c7 is not a blunder, it doesn't lose a pawn to a double capture because queen d6 will threaten the setting up that battery and, well, uh, Wesley knows that's the threat, exactly, and he defended uh, the pawn on uh, h2. Bishop g4, the knight now, it's really common to include the move h4 play bishop e2, but Wesley needs to shoot that play rook c1. Ah, knight e4, I can take him. By the way, just noting as I keep an eye on the Jeffrey Jean Magnus Carlson game, that uh, Jeffrey did play B3, but he won B3 against Magnus. We saw Nepo use that twice uh, with some success uh, earlier, but uh, and also a confirmation from Hunter Barbarami on that Nepo did disconnect, it did actually disconnect in that game that we saw Wesley. It looked like his camera was at the time that we were looking at it, so yeah, it, it did look like, it, like he had a, a connection issue. Now, uh, this move, Rook E8, does apply uh, Queen C2 because there are there, there is an issue with the pieces. So, so either we start with Bishop takes C6 and Queen C2, or Well, I didn't mention it was rich. I, that, that I didn't say. Yeah, this kind of position that looks like a reverse French. Um, that I'm not a big time fan of as compared to the isolated pawn positions. But when I say rich, I mean that there's a lot that could. No pieces are traded, so there's a lot of potential tension. I do like the choice. I mean, Jeffrey saw that Nepo beat and his girls in this one and three, and he earlier had like almost a 30 second advantage. Absolutely, and I think in these types of positions, you can take a, a leaf out of uh, Anatoly Karlov's book. You play a move like Bishop takes c6. Here, B takes c6 again. Queen c2. I'm creating a target on the c6 square, angling maybe for queen f5, but more. Wanting to play queen c2 and c5 would be my approach. Now, Wesley has been doing a very good job on his time management. That's true. Like, Apparently, it's good. Not crazy. Yeah. Um, Knight f1 he played. Looking to play Knight g3 and block that thing. Not a fan of this move. Yeah, because Knight e4. Agreed. Yeah, Knight e4 is. Really nice post up. 94, yeah. I mean, I agree with you, Jen, that uh, knight f1 yeah, is preparing knight g3 and 94 looks to stop that defensive move. Bishop a5, rook e2 instantly, by the way, not fearing the double pawns of uh, bishop f3. Uh. By the way, we should just glance at the Magnus position. It does look as though Magnus, early in the game, played bishop takes, uh, allowed bishop takes f8 and had his king capture back on f8. Then he played g6 uh, and put his king on g7. It looks like white's game has gone nowhere, like nowhere, while black is played for h5 and is looking for an attack with white's king. Sitting on e1, I'm not sure where he wants to go, but Magnus has a ready-made attack. He 
G5 and G4 if white is not careful. This looks very suspicious for black. Very suspicious for people who are preferred for white. For white, excuse me, my apologies. Yes. For white, yeah, it's we'll, okay. keep, we'll keep our eye on this, but it really looks very good for Magnus as Jeffrey's trying to get some kind of clue on the green side. Right. Meantime, back to this Wesley's game, and Wesley has a lot of capture on it three, and his, his king side to be open, but he has the two bishops. What is this? What is this? I think it's good for white. Uh, jury's still out in my estimation. Um, I think it's good for white. I do like white. The two bishops, the G7s, diagon the diagonal with the bishop uh, piercing down on G7. Mainly, I just don't see how you get any play as white. What are you supposed to do? Double rooks on the C line? You get on the knight on C6? which normally would be attacking H3. F3 pawns attacking H3 pawns. I don't want to defend it at all. What? You don't want to defend it? You want to play queen takes H3? I don't want to defend it, but I don't see what to do. He's playing KG2. I really didn't want to defend it, to be honest, but, but uh, yeah, I probably smart as Wesley did to play KG2. There's no rook E6, right? E6 or G6? C5, which hit this really uh, weak, weak pawn. 
LeVon on the D5. And LeVon is trying for cheapos. He just played the move D4, but I, I think he's he's all out of luck. This yeah, so bring up that Magnus game, please. Just leave it on your screen. We can watch this main game. Just leave it on the analysis screen. As Magnus is almost going to win. Look at that position. You see there two pass pawns. Dominant knight. Knight D5 was threatened. So we've got the two leaders right now as Wesley is just on an E7. He just take a pawn. Magnus just played knight G2 check. Four king rooks. He's going to have two what? connected passers. That game is now over. That game is over. Magnus Carlson winning against Jeffrey Johns. 1v3. Meanwhile, the Vaughn with only seven seconds left now. And he's down two pawns. Yeah, and uh, again, Wesley in cruise control here. As no, everything's just gone perfectly. This is like insanely good for White. And there it is. Uh, you see um, Ravon shaking his head. He hasn't given up yet, but he's, he's not pleased with how this fair down. Exactly. Well, you get to go rook c7 and bishop d4, and your bishop is going to be absolutely fabulous on this d4 square. And here you get to go h5 and e4 and e5. It's 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 all one way traffic for for um, for white. Leslie showing when he needed to win. He's winning. He, yeah, it's amazing, right? When he when somehow he forces himself to play hard, he's formidable. It's kind of like the procrastination. It's like I don't need to do this homework now. I don't need to write this paper. Uh, but right. then when it's like, you need to or you're not going to pass, you're not going to win this tournament, it's like, wait a second. You're out of here, right? Yeah. I'm getting an A. Yeah, exactly. Now, the other thing Wesley can do is go from A7, A5, A6. Yeah, and that looks like I don't, I don't like this construction that the bishop could be potentially passive left behind. Okay, so he did it in a different way. He went from A7, bishop A5, rook here, and he managed to engineer a trade oh uh, e5 oh five. that was terrible bishop b6 was okay that was a howler over game over yeah uh, and now bishop yeah, d4 is easy and just south i was gonna test one this matters so much in the end game why do you play bishop d4 why do you play i don't i don't like it bishop d4 i put myself back from playing bishop d4 yeah you know both hands right dr strange um Bishop, yeah, eight and e5. A little bit strange for me. What's going on? Okay, still easily winning e5, and Bishop f8 should clinch. Wow, he took so that he can swing his king into h5 or g5. Also, also easily. Doesn't look attractive though, does it? It doesn't. It, it's winning, but it feels like right, right. It, it's it's like, like might something it, happen along along the way? Uh, no. It, the problem is the H pawn. You put your bishop here. You don't put your king there. You take this guy and your H pawn yeah, just goes definitely. straight up the board. And this is a good time to resign. And he has. And look at that. The two leaders both scoring victory. Matching. Victories, yeah.